Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lost Love Chronicles. Today's video features an incredible story, so let's dive right in. I'm really struggling right now. I can't believe what I just walked in on, my wife, the person I trusted more than anyone else in the world, was in our bed with someone else. It feels like my world has come crashing down, and I'm not sure how to handle it. We've been together for nearly 20 years, and I thought we had a strong, loving relationship. But looking back, there were signs that I ignored. She started texting late at night, going out for drinks with friends more often than usual, and she even joined a yoga class that I later found out she wasn't really attending. I noticed unknown caller hangups on our phones, too. It all seems so clear now, but at the time, I didn't want to believe it. I was supposed to be out of town for work until tonight, and we were planning a two-week road trip to spend some quality time together. I came home early, and that's when I saw a truck in our driveway that I didn't recognize. I had a terrible feeling in my gut, but I couldn't have imagined what I would find. I approached our bedroom window and heard their voices. When I looked inside, my worst fear was confirmed, they were both naked on our bed. I couldn't believe my eyes. I walked away, trying to contain the overwhelming anger and sadness that were consuming me. I didn't know what to do, so I went to our family's cabin and drowned my sorrows in alcohol. Today, I was on my way home to confront her, but I stopped myself. I'm not ready to face her, and all I can think about is the anger and the urge to do something I know I'll regret. I'm back at the cabin now, staring at a bottle of rum, torn between wanting to forget all of this and fearing that I might make bad decisions if I get drunk. I know I'm at a crossroads, and what I do in the coming days will shape the rest of my life. But right now, all I can feel is pain and anger, and I don't know how to move forward. I called my brother, and he's on his way. He should be here in the next couple of hours. My wife just sent me a text saying she loves me and can't wait to go on our vacation. I haven't responded yet. I've noticed several comments and questions that keep popping up, and I wanted to provide some clarity. If you can't tell, I'm feeling a lot better today. The pain has almost completely subsided, although I still feel like I've been punched in the gut. But otherwise, I've started to think about the future. I can't help but wonder if this is just a calm before the storm or if I'm somehow freakishly resilient. As for the questions and comments, here are some points to clarify things. When I mentioned my wife as my best friend, I was referring to the two roles she played in my life. The other guy was not my best friend or even someone I knew well. I didn't get a great look at him, but from the quick glance and seeing his vehicle, I don't feel like he's someone I know. We don't have kids, but we were planning to have them soon. We recently sold our house and were set to move closer to my job in September when the new owners take possession. I am planning to thank my neighbor, but I'll do it subtly, just like he did for me. Willop, I have to say that what happened to me has got to be one of the worst things to come home to after a long work trip. I'm really sorry that you had to go through something similar. When my brother arrived, we had a good, long talk. He has been my true best friend, and I realized I need to always remember that he will always be there for me without judgment, just as I would be for him. He really sets the standard for what a true friendship is, even if we fight on occasion. Since I was supposed to be home last night, I decided to respond to my wife's text. We aren't allowed to have phones on site, so it was reasonable for me to only be texting her. She knows it's easy for me to sneak in some texts. I wrote her back and said I needed to go to one of my company's remote sites and wouldn't be able to call her until the end of the weekend. I also told her that I would cancel all the reservations and rebook later. She responded by saying that she could take her best friend with her this weekend to the romantic bed and breakfast on the vineyard that I booked. I made the decision not to let her take the trip with her supposed best friend. I told her that I had already given the reservation to my brother and his wife, and since it was non-refundable, they would pay me back in a month. This morning, I cancelled all the reservations except the romantic one. My brother is coming with me, and thankfully, the hotel allowed us to switch from the honeymoon suite to a room with two beds. It turns out there's also a really nice lake and boat rentals nearby, 
so this has turned into a long overdue fishing trip with my brother. It's a welcome distraction, and it means I'm free for the weekend. I don't have to write to her or talk to her for a few days, which has relieved some stress and given me more time to think. Right now, I'm in the mindset of pursuing a divorce. I honestly can't see any other way forward. My brother is supportive of this decision but has asked me to take a few weeks and speak to someone about it. His wife knows a couple's counselor who's willing to talk to me on Monday. While I don't see it changing my mind, I understand that it might help untangle some of this mess for me. I'm also taking advice from others here and starting to speak to lawyers, at the very least to prepare for what I think is inevitable. I want to handle this situation correctly. I've never thought of her as someone who would try to harm me, but I also never expected her to cheat, so I think I need to be prepared for anything. In the past few days, my brother Matt and I drove nearly five hours to the Tibetan breakfast on the vineyard. I truly appreciate his support through all of this. Our trip ended up being more of a venting session than anything else, but it really helped clear my head. We attempted some fishing, but it wasn't very successful. We both caught a couple of trout that we had to release due to their size, so we relied on some snacks that the bed and breakfast owner gave us, which worked out great. On Sunday, we made the drive back to Matt's place, which is in the next town over from mine and about an hour away from my place. When we arrived at Matt's, his wife Jen was there, and we all sat down to share a bottle of white wine that we had chilling in the cooler. It was during this gathering that the weekend officially ended for me. Jen told me that while we were away, she decided to go and check on my wife. She revealed that the guy had been at my place on Friday night, all night. However, on Saturday morning, Jen managed to get there just as he was leaving. She followed him home and discovered the apartment where he lived. My wife had stayed over there on Saturday night, the same night she was sending me text messages saying she loves me and misses me. Jen said she had been splitting her time between visiting family in my town and, well, keeping an eye on my wife. She mentioned that she happened to catch my wife leaving his apartment on Sunday morning and even took a few pictures of them hugging and kissing before my wife got into her car. I told her that I didn't want to see those pictures. That pretty much sealed the deal for me. I couldn't imagine ever trusting my wife again if she could turn her emotions on and off so easily telling me she loves me while being with another guy. I decided that I wouldn't make a knee-jerk reaction based solely on emotions. I needed to remain calm and level-headed. That's when Jen told me that Sharon, the counselor she had set me up with an appointment to meet, was coming over for dinner. Sharon had never met my wife, and this was my first time meeting her as well. Sharon turned out to be a very nice person, and we got along great. After dinner, Sharon and I went for a walk around Matt's neighborhood to walk the dogs and have a private conversation. Sharon was an excellent listener and made me feel like I didn't need to be guarded. It was therapeutic to be so open about my feelings, especially since, as much as I'm comfortable with my brother, this was just different and very much needed. It's the same reason why I like writing about my experiences on Reddit, it's a way to vent and untangle some of the mess in my head. Our walk lasted about an hour, and the most important piece of advice Sharon gave me was not to delay the conversation with my wife. She said that the longer I wait, the harder it will become to talk to her about all of this. Sharon emphasized that I needed clarity more than anything at this point, and my wife is the only person who can provide that. Later that night, Jen and Matt offered me a place to stay with them for as long as necessary. I knew that being in close quarters with Matt for an extended period had its limits, so I spoke to my boss, who managed to set me up in company housing. I had been staying there every second week for a while, but I had to leave on my off days. Now, my boss made it possible for me to stay full-time for a few months if needed. I decided to rebook a session with Sharon for later in the week. I figured I would talk about the surface issues during the first session and then delve deeper in subsequent ones. She agreed to that plan. On Sunday night, I found myself lying in bed, contemplating how to approach this conversation with my wife. I struggled with it because even imagining the scenario in my head made me feel angry and sad. I decided to just wing it, I'm usually good under pressure. 
The next day, I said my goodbyes to Matt and Jen and drove toward home, wondering what if he was there when I arrived. Then I thought that it would likely just put me back in the angry spot I was a few days ago. So, I decided to do a drive-by first. Neither his truck nor my wife's car were there. I went inside and grabbed a bunch of essentials and things I didn't want to part with. Then I headed over to the guy's apartment. Her car wasn't there either, but his truck was. I decided to text her to see where she was. She said she was getting groceries. I trust her so little right now that I drove by the grocery store and actually confirmed she was there. I feel so dirty admitting that I did that, but my trust is broken, and it's the only way I can be certain of anything. I texted her again and told her to come home because we needed to talk. She got home 15 minutes later and came over to give me a hug and a kiss, like she always does. But this time, I turned away from her. She asked me again what was wrong, so I told her that she needed to start being honest with me. She played dumb, saying she had no idea what I was talking about. I said okay, if you can't be honest, then I'm leaving. At this point, she started panicking and asked if I was talking about yoga. I figured it was a start, so I asked her what she meant. She admitted that she hadn't been going to yoga. I asked where she had been going instead, and she said she was taking walks to relax because she'd been so stressed lately. I asked her what had been stressing her so much and why she felt the need to lie to me about what she was doing. She blamed the preparations for the upcoming move and deflected, saying she didn't know how to tell me. I kept pushing and told her that lying was the decision she made, and I needed to know why she couldn't just tell me she was going for a walk to distress. She said she didn't mean to lie and that she was worried about adding to my stress. I told her I wasn't stressed and it seemed like she was not telling me everything. She gave me a surprised look and asked, what do you mean? I looked at her and said, I think that you're lying about more than just skipping yoga. I am asking you again to be honest. You've already lied to me, so this can't work if you keep lying. She tried to deflect again, saying she didn't know what else to say, and followed up with, oh, are you talking about last weekend when I went for drinks with some friends and came home late? I had a feeling that bothered you. I had no clue that she went for drinks or was out late, I was at work a couple of hours away. So, I asked her if that's what she really did or if she was lying again. She clarified that she went for drinks that night but didn't see the best friend she was supposedly with. I followed up by asking who she did see, and she said, no one, I just drank alone. Of course, I wasn't buying her latest story, and my patience was running thin. I asked her if it was a thing now, drinking alone, to which she responded with, yeah, maybe I have a problem. I told her to put a pin in her drinking problem and that she had one last chance to be honest, or I was leaving. She looked at me and said she didn't know what else to say, so I just got up and left. Usually, when we have an argument, I go for a drive to get away from her. She probably thought this was the same routine. Then she realized I had taken my clothes, toiletries, and even the Xbox. That's when she began blowing up my phone. I told her that I gave her a chance to be honest, and she didn't take it. So, there was nothing left to say. She begged and pleaded with me to come home to talk about this in person. She said she had no idea why I was so upset or what she had done. She repeated that she loved me and would never hurt me. Just hearing her say that tore a new hole in my chest. It was always comforting words that I believed without question, but now they felt like a dull, jagged knife sawing through my heart in the most devastating way. I couldn't handle it, so I hung up. She called back about 40 times before I was ready to answer again. This time, she asked if I had talked to Karen, the best friend. I asked why, and she said, come home, I don't want to say this over the phone. I agreed and drove around a little longer to get my heart rate back down, then I went home. She started with, I assume you spoke to Karen. I just stared at her, so she continued, talking about how a few weeks ago, while I was at work, they went for drinks. A couple of guys started buying them drinks, so they played alone. When they were leaving, one of the guys tried to kiss her, but she pulled away immediately and told them she was married. 
Then she said how bad she felt about it and wanted to tell me, but she decided to hide it from me instead. She also told me that Karen had hooked up with the other guy and gave his friend my wife's number without asking. He had texted her a few times since, but she had never replied. After all that, I simply asked her to let me see her phone, and she gave it to me. It was completely empty of texts except for messages from myself and her mother. She never deletes her texts, so this was new. I looked at her photos, which were also clean. However, I checked the deleted photos and found one of a guy I didn't recognize. I asked her who it was, and she told me it was the guy that tried to kiss her. I followed up by asking her why she took a picture of him, to which she again blamed herself, saying, I was just being stupid. I wasn't going to let her get away with that and pointed out that it's not a reason and asked her to tell me why she did it. She said she didn't know. By now, I was getting tired of this whole thing and asked if that was everything she wanted to tell me or if there was more. She said that's all she could think of. Once again, I laughed. I didn't want to be subjected to a trickle of half-truths. I got in my truck and drove away. She ran outside trying to stop me, but I was already out of reach. I went to a nearby park and just sat on my tailgate, eating my lunch, trying to figure out what to do next. While being away and reflecting on everything, I began to remember other instances where I should have been more aware of potential issues. There were moments like the time when I was working a weekend shift and went to bed early. My wife went out to the club with some of her girlfriends. I woke up at 4 a.m., and she still wasn't home. I called her several times, but there was no answer. About 30 minutes later, she called me back and asked if I would come and get her. When I picked her up, she told me that they were trying to hail a taxi but had no luck. A couple of guys her friend knew stopped and offered them a ride but wanted to stop at home first. When they got to the guy's house, her married friend went into a room with one of the guys. My wife said she spent some time looking for her friend but eventually gave up and had a drink in the kitchen with the roommates while she waited. She claimed she didn't hear her phone when I tried calling. We fought about this incident and she was disgusted by her friend's actions, so she cut that friend out of her life. I thought that was the end of it. Then there was another time when she traveled to visit a close friend in a different city for a planned girls' night. There were four girls, and they were all getting drunk and watching movies in their pajamas, or at least that's what I was told. She called me around 1 a.m. to say goodnight, and we spoke for about 20 minutes. During our conversation, she repeatedly told me they were having a great girls' night. However, I heard a guy's voice in the background. I asked who it was, and at first, she denied hearing anything. But then it happened again, loudly, and she couldn't deny it. She finally said, oh yeah, ex-friend took a couple of guys with her. Everyone here is super angry about it. She was drunk and three hours away, and she left me no choice but to trust her again. After remembering all those things and the conversations we had about them, I was ready to give our relationship one last shot. I turned my phone back on, and almost immediately, it rang. I answered, and she was screaming for me to come home. I drove back to the house, walked inside, and was immediately confronted by her, bawling her eyes out. She was sitting on the couch, repeating, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I asked her what she was sorry for and it took her a good five minutes to catch her breath enough to speak. Finally, she admitted to lying about the guy who tried to kiss her. I looked at her and asked her to tell me what happened. She said that the four of them had actually gone back to his place that night, where they fooled around. I knew it was more than that, but just hearing her say it made me feel dizzy. It felt like the room was getting smaller, and there were a million people speaking into my ears at the same time. I think I was having a panic attack. I went to the bathroom and washed my face in cold water until things returned to normal. I went back and asked her exactly what she did. She tried to avoid it, but I pressed her, and she said that he touched her and she gave him head. I knew that wasn't all of it, so I asked her if that was it, and she said yes. I was really upset at this point and told her I wasn't playing this trickle-truth game any longer. I told her that she either tells me everything right now, 
or this will be the last time we speak. She began bawling again and took another few minutes before she was able to speak. Now she confessed that they had met up again and slept together, immediately followed by, I'm so sorry, I love you, and will do anything to make up for this. Since I knew the truth, I asked her if it was just the one time. She paused and said that if she tells me the truth, to please give her a chance to do anything she can to make up for it. I told her I'd think about it, and that's when the whole truth finally came out. She admitted that it was an affair, that they had been hooking up while I was out of town for work, and that it had been going on for almost a month. She told me he is married and they are about to get divorced. I asked her if he knows she's married, and she said yes. Then I asked if he was having an affair because his marriage is failing, does that mean she thinks our marriage is failing? She said she didn't think ours was failing, then continued saying, I'm so stupid, I hate myself, please don't leave me. I asked her how she would fix this, and she said she'd do whatever I wanted. So, I asked her if she were in my shoes or her affair partner's wife's shoes, what would fix this for her? My wife answered, saying that knowing the truth and being able to trust me to mean what I was saying would fix it. She assured me that I could trust her and that she screwed up and wouldn't do that again. I then asked her if she were in his wife's shoes, would she want to know the truth? She replied yes, and I told her to fix it. She looked at me and asked if I wanted her to call his wife. I told her that if she thought that was what she would want, she should do it. So, she tried calling but never got an answer. A few minutes later, her cell phone rang, and it was listed as Karen work. She looked shocked because she knew it wasn't Karen. I asked if that was him, and she confirmed it. I answered the call, and he said, oops, I must have the wrong number. I told him that this was the husband of the girl he'd been cheating with and that I was going to let him speak to her because she had something to tell him. I handed her the phone. My wife told him that she had told me everything, that I knew the entire truth, that they were done, and it was just a fling, and now he needed to never contact her again. I asked to see the phone before she hung up and asked him which divorce lawyer he was using. He replied that he wasn't getting divorced. I asked him why he told my wife he was, and he said he didn't. I then asked to speak to his wife because I felt she had as much right to know about this as I did. He pleaded with me not to tell her because she was at work, and he would tell her everything when she got home. I agreed to that and hung up. I turned to my wife and asked if she knew where his wife worked and her name. She did, so I had her call his wife's workplace. She managed to get her on the phone and told her to take a seat because she had something terrible to share and didn't want her to be driving. The wife became scared and asked if something happened to her husband. My wife assured her that he was fine and in their apartment at the moment. My wife then confessed that they had been having an affair for a month. She was coming clean to me and she thought the wife should know as well. The wife went silent for about a minute and then said that if this was some sick joke, she would find out who my wife was. Then she hung up. Not even 10 minutes later, my wife received a text from Karen Work saying, Thanks, you just ruined my life. I grabbed the phone and wrote back, You just ruined four lives and two marriages, don't forget that this was your fault, you piece of crap. For the next hour, my wife begged and pleaded with me to stay with her. She offered counseling, she offered to never leave my side, and she even offered me sexual favors. It was everything I expected, thanks to the comments I had read here. Then she suggested we go on that vacation, her treat, as she thought we needed time away. She said we needed to spend quality time together because my work schedule had been pushing us apart lately, which was also exactly what I expected her to say. What she didn't expect was for me to tell her that I had already booked counseling for myself and that I had found a place to stay. When I shared all of this with her, she fell to the floor, bawling. She started saying how she didn't deserve to live and told me I should just end it for her because she felt too terrible to be with anyone. It went on like that for a while, with her making excuses, then trying to hug me, cuddle me, or even offer physical intimacy if I would just stay and work through this with her. In the end, I called Karen and told her that her cheating friend was feeling suicidal and that she should come keep an eye on her. Then I left. It's been almost a full day since that happened and I haven't spoken to her since.
She, her friends, and her family have been calling and texting me all day, each with their own excuses or pleas for empathy. Only her father wrote to me, saying that I need to do what is best for me and that he will always love me like a son no matter what happens. Reading his message was what made me have a good cry for the first time since all of this began. I am scheduled to meet with Sharon, my counselor, tomorrow and with a lawyer on Thursday. I think I know where this is going, but until it happens, I am just not sure about anything. This past week has been very eventful. I've been going back and forth between my camp and my brother's place, trying not to be a burden on them and only staying on nights when I have early appointments. My company has allowed me to take a few weeks of personal time, which has been incredibly helpful. I've continued visiting Sharon, the therapist, and have seen her a total of three times now. While I don't think our visits are highly productive, I find it a good opportunity to clear some thoughts in my head, so I plan to keep going for now. I met with a lawyer last Thursday, and with their guidance, I made a list of all our assets and finances, including debt. I then went to the bank and asked them to put a stop on our joint accounts, preventing any withdrawals without both of us present. We both have our pay deposited into our personal accounts, so this won't affect our access to new money, only the old and shared funds. The lawyer suggested that I don't confront her until I serve her the divorce papers, but it's already too late for that. Throughout the week, I received constant calls and texts from my wife, her family, and her friends. This past weekend, my sister-in-law organized a family get-together at the cabin, and I had to share the news with my family. At least it's now out in the open, and I can include them in my recovery process. Things were going as well as could be expected until Saturday night around 8 p.m. I was sitting around the fire with my brother and dad when my wife's car pulled up. My brother Matt told me he would handle it, and my dad and I decided to go for a walk around the property out of sight from the driveway. We had barely entered the forest when I heard my wife screaming at my brother to get out of her way. She had a couple of her friends with her, and they were all yelling at Matt and telling him to mind his own business. Despite his efforts, they were too much for him to handle, and she got past him, rushing towards us. She must have seen us heading that way. My dad offered to deal with her, but I said I would handle it. Kate, let's call her for simplicity's sake, came running over to me, bawling. She immediately went for a hug, and I didn't stop her, but I didn't hug her back. She begged me to speak to her, and I agreed. We walked around the property trails to find some privacy. Kate told me that the other guy's wife had left him, and he had called her, threatening to end his life and blaming it all on her. She claimed that she told him to just do it and hadn't spoken to him since. Then she pulled out a piece of paper and started listing ways she promised to make it up to me, essentially repeating everything she offered on the first day, from couples counseling to sexual requests. But then she surprised me. She said she didn't want to continue living this way and wanted us both to quit our jobs and go live overseas, starting that little beach bar we'd always talked about. She said she would leave right now if I would go with her. To put this into context, this past week, while envisioning my life post-divorce, this was the only thing I could think of. I figured a complete restart of everything since I was already going through the effort of a massive change might as well add another piece to it and just do exactly what I want. Hearing her want the exact same thing made me momentarily snap back into that feeling of missing her and wanting to be with her. It was the moment I knew I had to end the conversation. I walked her back to her car where her friends were waiting, told her I would be willing to speak on the phone, but couldn't promise anything beyond that. It calmed her enough to leave. We've spoken on the phone each night since, but it's always the same, she cries and begs me for another chance. Despite the temptation to reconnect, I knew I had to stick to my decision. I've been grappling with intense emotions, missing the friendship and shared dreams we once had, but also feeling the weight of betrayal. It's a challenging journey, and I can only hope that time and self-care will help me heal and find a new path forward.